Good evening. This is Bonnie B's Spiritual Vitamin. Our music for the purpose of meditation today was Christopher Cross Sailing. The reason I chose sailing as a meditation of music is because of water. Water is a very calming element. The idea of allowing your mind to sail, drift, be at peace and at ease. The metaphor of sailing and what sailing represents to the spirit is why I chose that song. Because if you allow your spirit to sail, and drift and move in the positive vibrations that we're trying to lay on the track for you to wake up. You're going to be all right. When you think about sailing, you think about peace, serenity, calming. 
And when you think of those aspects, and you take your shoes off, and you put your feet in the grass, or you even run it through the dirt, and you close your eyes, and you feel Mother Gaia, she's grounding you. She's putting you back in touch with where you originated, the soil. Because through Mother Earth, through the vibrations of the universe, you can gain power. When you learn how to reconnect source, how to free your mind and go to the core, to the center of the very essence of who you are, and stand still and watch life circle you like a centrifugal force. You will find that in the middle of that, while life is sailing around you, you'll get the peace that God means for you to have. First, you gotta set your mind free. You gotta open it up. And you gotta start questioning Start questioning you. Start questioning your existence. Why the hell are you here? Because when you begin to question your existence and you begin to question things like that, that's your first step to waking up. When you start questioning why am I here and what's my purpose and I know I was designed to do more than what I'm doing. I know this can't be all there is to life. You're beginning to wake up. When you no longer feel comfortable doing the things that you are doing, and certain conversations begin to bother you, and certain situations begin to bother you, and you begin to say, I know it's got to be more to it than this, it's time to wake up. One of the songs I played was Teddy Pendergrass, Wake Up. Everybody, no more sleeping in bed. No more backwards thinking. Time for thinking ahead. We don't have so very long before that judgment day. And we don't. And he wrote that song back in the 70s. This is 2000, 30 years ago, Teddy wrote that. Number three, spirit wants you to wake up. No more sleeping in bed. Get up. Get on your jobs. Let's get this vitamin in. Build these spiritual muscles so we can learn how to line up these chakras. Because your chakra is your secret tool to moving forward. Waking up that kundalini, right, Doc? Mm-hmm. Gotta do it. Gotta do it. But before you can wake up anything, you need some knowledge. Because we got a lot of carnal people running around here that need to no longer see things carnally, but see things spiritually. Because carnality and spirituality cannot see the same thing. Carnality is your flesh. Flesh will always hold you back. But when you begin to see carnality as carnality and begin to understand spirituality and the fact that you fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, principalities, in high places. King James, word of God. We fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities in high places. Those are demons. For they go to and fro, seeking whom they may devour. King James. Talking about demons.
So I said, this is spiritual warfare. And in a spiritual war, he says, armor up. This is your armor. What I'm feeding you is your armor to armor up. To get ready for the spiritual battle. Because if you don't know who you fighting, you can't win. But when you know who you belong to, you already won. See the difference? I'm trying to make you winners. Because if you're standing on the side of righteousness, you're a winner. He said the battle is not ours. It's the Lord's. All we got to do is stand still. But when you start dealing in this beast system, which is definitely on the horizon, because when you begin to look around you and you see that back in 1972-73, there used to be a time when there was little stickers on the cans and the goods telling you how much it cost. As the 70s began to leave, so did the stickers. And when we began to go into the number eight, which is a new beginning, so did the barcode. The barcode was a binary number system which introduced the B system. B system is the number of man, the computer generation. The beast is the computer. He knows everything about every one of us. And the object of the B system is to desensitize you to death of people dying and disappearing every day. They want to desensitize you to that. They want to give you things in your life that they're going to introduce as something that's good for you. But if you have read your Bible, at least the King James Version, then you know that the B system will be introduced as something that is good. There are jobs right now for their employees to come into the building. They are tagged. That's what I call it. Tagged. Just like you tag a dog. You take the dog to the vet, and you want to make sure don't nothing happen to him. Most of y'all don't put a chip in that dog. So that when your dog disappear, he ring up on the chip system. Guess what? Before they do it to man, they do it to the animals. They already chipped. You got some people on jobs who are chipped. They chip because of security reasons is what they tell you. They got facial recognition software. IBM during the days of Auschwitz, it was IBM who did the concentration camp numbering system for those prisoners. When they introduced the new world order, there will be another numbering system. It will be a binary numbering system because the computer is the master. That's how come everything you do is digitized. That's how come they changed you from analog. They're getting you ready. Getting you ready. They're getting you off of that paper money, putting you on them credit cards and electronic money and bitcoins and everything else. They're getting you ready. They're setting the scene. Because I told you, tribulation is pregnant. She's going to give birth. These are signs. You need to pay attention to Israel. When they rebuild that mosque, according to the book of Revelations and the King James Version. Now, I don't know what this book says because I ain't got that far, but we're going to get there together. But what I do know is that God is coming back. He's made that abundantly clear. He has placed it in my spirit and so many others. I'm not the only one who knows. And there are people out there talking about, oh, they've been saying for years he's coming back. True. They have. They have. But when you understand that one day 
is a thousand years to God. One day is a thousand years to God. As you know, the concept of time means nothing to God. He got his own watch, and it ain't your watch. That's how come so many have passed on, looking for the promise of the return of Christ. Because they are looking at their watches. And none of the watches are right because there's three different calendar times. There's the Julian calendar, the Mayan calendar, the galaxy Everybody got a calendar. Only one right calendar is God's. That's true. Today, this evening, talk about another star seed. Give you some more traits. Because I need y'all to waken up. Awaken. 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 And the only way I can wake you up is give you some knowledge about some of these star seeds so you can see where you fit in. So you can understand who you are. Because if you don't know who you are, can't do nothing with you. Because the last thing God needs is a whole bunch of us running around here. I want to take a couple minutes and I want to talk to you or provoke thought in you with the question. I'm going to give you a little bit of knowledge on how I feel about it and you can comment on how you feel about it. We're going to see where we stand. The question I want to pose at this point in time, because like I said, this is enlightenment. So my question for enlightenment that I want to pose at this time is, do you have free will? Do you have free will. The effects of our choices can create fallout caused by the money we spend, the products we allow into our homes and bodies. Both waste inevitably caused through consuming almost anything today and the pollution left in the making of it. Are you making choices because you are truly tuned into what you should be sending out? Are you selecting what will serve you and the collective beyond ego-driven moments? Or are you simply, senselessly, unconsciously moving through a pre-programmed pathway? Or one that is so ingrained in your DNA of humanity that it becomes untraceable? Have you actually been designed to follow 
a certain flow to fulfill a certain role and keep this matrix wheel turning with just the right pace to keep this patriarchal paradigm afloat. There's waking up and there's waking up. The genuine ascension of personal consciousness and then there's simply straying into another pre-programmed pathway of consumption of a slightly different name. And it's essentially identical in nature. You must actually work to deprogram yourself or you will not escape the matrix. That's why I'm teaching Because so many of you are aimlessly walking from one flow pathway into another. Because this has been so ingrained in your DNA that this is what you're supposed to do. But in actuality, it's not. But you have been pre You've been pre-programmed in the way you behave, the way you behave, when you behave, when you're in certain situations. You're never really free to be who you really are and what you really feel because you can't even stand to be by yourself sometimes. You've got to have somebody around, somebody to talk to. That's how come COVID-19 was driving a whole lot of people crazy. It didn't drive me crazy at all. I love me because I got self-love and I got self-worth. So I know how valuable it is to spend time with oneself and learn and eat and appreciate the the things that are around you. The fresh air, the trees, the breeze. The simple things in life that God gives you. Because when you appreciate the small things, God gives you bigger things. Because he sees you appreciate the gifts that he has bestowed upon you. That's why it says when the blessings go up, praises go up, blessings come down. That's why. In order for you to be able to deprogram yourselves, the first thing you have to learn to do is question authority. Why is this like that? That don't mean you're supposed to go out and riot. No. That means within your own self. Because deprogramming is an individual trait. It's an individual action. It's an individual activity. It's not a group activity. It's individual. Nobody around you is going to deprogram you but you. You got to decide that's what you want. That's where the choice comes in. Do I want to stay like I am or do I want something better? Do I want to seek after God or do I just want to keep rolling like I'm rolling because I've been doing good so far? So far, if you think you're doing good, you're in trouble. Because if you ain't got the blood of Jesus covering you, you ain't doing as good as you think. Okay? Just a little tidbit. You have to reject materialism. Meaning stop getting caught up in stuff. Can't take it with you. Why are you getting caught up in it? Only thing you get to take with you is your soul and your consciousness. That's it. You don't get to take your Mercedes. You don't get to take your yacht. You don't get to take your two-wheeler. 
You don't get to take your three wheeler. You don't get to take your camper. You don't get to take your bank account. You don't get to take none of that. That's why I keep saying only what you do for Christ will last. Because at the end of the day, only what you do for Christ will last. You got to be discerning about what you're putting in your body. There are certain foods and refined sugars and processed dairies and meat that prevent you from ascending. Fluoride in the water has chlorine in it. Close up your third eye. Block intuitive nature. The things of this world are not all meant for the light worker, star seed, divine masculine, divine feminine, those who are called to higher powers, the righteous and the elect. They're not for everybody. That's how come awakening is so important. You have to escape the herd mentality. You know that one that says, well, he going. They going. All us going. That group nature. Always want to travel in a group. That's how you wind up flowing from one path over to another. Herb mentality. All of the cows been chased over here by the dog, so now they all over here. All the sheep been chased by the sheep dog, so now that whole group of sheep over here. That's that herb mentality. Spirit say, you got to break that. You're coming out the matrix. You got to break it. You got to break it. I can't break it for you. I had to break mine. There are many out there who had to break theirs. You got to decide you want to break yours. That's why I said take that blue pill. Blue pill is the pill of heavenly knowledge. You take that pill. You need to be authentically creative. And be careful that creative isn't just about escapism or coming up with a new idea, a new social solution or um, innovation breakthrough that you're just doing for self. Got to come out that matrix. Got to come out the matrix. Well, my beloveds, I'm out of time. I thank the Holy Ghost for the opportunity to have the discussion with you about free choice. Because in this process of waking up, free choice is very much a concept that you need to be thinking about and whether or not you really have free choice. Only you can answer that question. I can't answer it for you. Okay. But my beloveds, you all stay blessed. And understand that the great source of God is coming back soon. Got to keep eating. Got to keep learning. Got to keep burning these candles. Because he's coming in a twinkle of an eye. And if you're not ready be left and I don't want anybody left unless you want to be left then it's free will and choice right it's just things all about so my blessed beloved you all if you enjoyed the video and like the content that it has hit up here and hit subscribe this channel is for the star seed, the light worker, the elect, the righteous, those who need illuminating and awakening. It's for all of you. 
I wish you love and I wish you peace. And most of all, I wish you the blessings of God that he may hold and keep you till the next broadcast and beyond.